G'day guys and welcome to another tutorial coming to you from our still life motion vid but today's going to be a bit of a different tutorial it's not going to be video editing or audio or graphic skills it's um it's going to be what the title says which is how to make your android phone look and feel like an iphone now all the haters out there who are saying how dare you switch from iphone to android or or how dare you make your android phone an iphone look I'm getting the best of both worlds with this. In Australia here, iPhone 6s go north of $1,000. This phone here, it's called a Qbot X9, and I bought it for $150 from China, plus postage, and um, I really don't need to say anything else about that. When you consider the price point, it's just a little bit too out of hand. Here in Australia, I'm not too sure what the prices are overseas, but iPhone 6, north of $1,000, I couldn't really justify spending that amount of money when, when, when this sort of phone was available for, for a couple of hundred bucks. So in saying that, I really love the way iPhones work. I like iOS a lot. And basically, I've been spending the last couple of months experimenting really with what works to make my Android phone feel as much like an iPhone as possible, just to make the transition a little bit easier. And so basically, I've come up with a list that's going to make your Android phone look like an iPhone as much as possible. And then I'm going to show you a couple of alternatives to make it feel more like an iPhone, yet um, I believe providing more functionality than some of the some of the initial things I'm going to show you. Now, I'll just let you know that I will probably split this video into two parts, just so I can have a bit more time to tell you about each app, the bugs that they have, and and things like that. Um, and so we're looking at about 10 to 15 minutes per part, and um, just just be aware of that that this will probably be two parts. Okay, so let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to show you is called Eye Launcher, and that's what you can see here. This is the um, layout, really, of your whole phone. So it's um, you know it eliminates basically the home screen of an Android, and it pretty much just gives you the app drawer. So as you can see here, if I slide across, it gives me that you know smooth animation across, and it gives me this road layout of my apps, um, like your app drawer does on an Android. But basically, it's just getting rid of your home screen, and um, and so you can change a lot of settings. Here's the app up here. It's called Eye Launcher, like I said, and you can jump into personalization. You can change the wallpaper, change the logo. Um, you can change the layout. Now I've got mine onto five rows, even though I only use four rows of apps. I just like the way that it leaves that gap down the bottom, but you can change that. Four rows, five, six, or tablet mode. If we jump back, you can change the icon size as well. There's plenty of settings there. And you can turn off the transitional animation like you can on iOS. And you can also play around with your fonts and your font color. Now, the great thing about this app is that it includes a whole range of other features as well. So, for example, you can see here um, it's emulating the iOS folders look. And I've got to say it does this really well. So, you can change the name of your folders to whatever you want. And you can have as many apps within the folder as well. Now, if I come here and I long press this app, you can see it comes up with that wiggly animation that it does on iOS. And so this has a very similar functionality to it that iOS does. So if I tap this little X, you can see a little um, pop-up comes up asking me if I want to uninstall that app directly. I'll just cancel that. And if I just, the beauty about this, and, and as Android owners will know, is that there's a lot more customization with Android. So if I tap on that icon, not on the X, it actually brings up a couple of options here. And I use this quite often. So I can change the actual icon, the image of the app. I can change the title. So instead of saying Dropbox, it says something like storage or whatever I want. And I can set it as a shortcut as well. And also you can hide the app directly. So I've hidden a lot of the um, default apps that come with Android just because they were making things a little bit messy and I never use them. So I've hidden a lot of default apps which you can't uninstall. Now if I just get out of that, the other feature that it has is you can actually slide down anywhere and it brings up this spotlight search that you have on iOS. Now, apparently this was recently reintroduced or introduced to this, um, to, to iLauncher. And I've got to say it works flawlessly. It does the trick. So if I type in, you know, it brings up all your apps. Um, it, it brings up music. It brings up emails. You can search the web directly from that. And that's a really cool feature to have. Very handy. A couple of things I will say about this app though is that obviously because it's getting rid of your home screen, it removes your ability to add widgets. Now I don't really use widgets that much, but the one thing that I would like to add widgets for is because on Android, obviously it doesn't um, give you those little red app badge notifications for when you have an unread notification. 
Um, and so with widgets, you can actually create individual icons that will have that badge on it. But obviously you can't do that with this. Um, the other thing I'll say is that every now and then, not often, and it's never, never in a big way, it can just be a little bit glitchy. So for example, when I'm um, clearing all my apps and I, I hit clean down there, sometimes you can see that it kind of pauses and then sometimes it'll even go, looks like it's being really laggy and it will kind of, the animation will lag in. Um, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. But again, it never affects the functionality of the phone. It's never laggy for more than a couple of seconds. And it's only a couple of animations that are off. But as for your functionality of it, it's flawless. And I, I use this all the time. I launch is the one thing that I go to. So you can get this on the Play Store for $3.41 here in Australia. You might think, yeah, that's a little bit pricey, but look, it's less than a cup of coffee and you use it every day of your life. So I think it's well worth the money. So yeah, that's iLauncher. Okay, the next one I'm gonna show you is called iNerdy. You can get this on the Play Store for, here in Australia, it's $1.88. And basically what it does is it emulates the iOS status bar that you can see at the top here. And the other thing it does is emulates the notification center from iOS. So you've got the today view, and over here, you've got your notifications. So for me, this app looks really nice and it seems to do the trick reasonably well. But I've got to say a few things. Um, first of all, like I said before, Android doesn't show you the little red badge notifications for when you miss a notification. It actually relies on its status bar to show you any notifications you have. So with iNoti, you remove that feature and you're relying on having to pull down and go to the notification panel um, to be able to see your notifications. So one thing I will say is that I miss a lot of notifications when I'm using iNoti simply because I, there's no little red badge on each app. Um, so that's the one thing. So it, it means that I don't use this all too often. Now they've actually, it looks like they've actually literally just updated it because when I, this never used to happen when I pull down, it's got this, I use Texture SMS as my messaging app and it's now got a little widget here so I can bring up a little quick compose box, which is really cool. That, that never was like that. So that's one thing I'll add. But the other thing is, is that every now and then it is a little bit buggy. So as you can see right now, my notification center isn't there at all. It's, uh, I don't actually know where it is. If I pull down, my native ones come back. I don't really know what's happened. So, um, so look, I've just jumped back in the app and it reappears. It's like it re-triggers itself. So that does happen once in a while. It doesn't happen too often, but Funnily enough, it happened right now making the video. So um, that's one thing. The other thing I'll say, and I, I have a feeling they might have updated it. So forgive me if I'm wrong, but before they did update it, and I'm not too sure if it's changed because I don't use it enough anymore, but um, it was a battery hogging app. Apparently the way that they loaded the calendar or something like that, it, um, yeah, it made, it, it just drained your battery quite a fair bit. Now I'll give you a little tip with this app because I never knew it before. Um, if, you, if you're worried about losing your native notification panel from your Android, you just slide down once and then you slide down again. Oop. Slide down once and then you slide down again and it brings down your native notification panel and that's where you can do all your normal stuff that you need to do should that be something you need to do. So that is... So it looks like the issue might be when I'm coming out of my notification panel. I don't know what's going on here, but I know he's glitching up a bit and um, yeah, obviously they're needing to do some updates to fix that. But I really do like the look of it. Looks, It looks nice, but again, because of the missed notification aspect, I find that I can't use it simply because I miss notifications. The other thing I will say is that um, often I've found they may have updated it as well, but my notifications don't appear in here. If I dismiss um, uh, you know, a notification that I get, um, you know, to, to read it later because I'm in a meeting or whatnot, um, it, sometimes it, it looks to get rid of it from this notification panel as well. So that's a bit of an issue. I want it to stay there until I actually go to it and clear it in the notification panel. So whether that's coming in an update, who knows? But for the moment, I can't really use it, but it really does emulate the iPhone look really well. So that's iNoti. Okay, the next one here is called HI or high lock screen, I don't know how you say it, but um, that's free on the Google Play Store. Now this obviously, you can see what it does, it emulates the iPhone lock screen. Now, I'll say that no app that I've found on the Google Play Store flawlessly emulates the, the iOS lock screen. 
This one is the best that I've found. Um, it seems to be um, not that glitchy and it looks reasonably similar, but as you can, you might be able to tell that the fonts are a bit off, um, the date, you know, all that, and the slide to unlock animation is a little bit, um, yeah, just a little bit fake looking. Um, it's, it's not got that nice sheen that it usually has, I don't know. So you can tell the fonts are a bit off, um, but it does have this quick toggle for the camera app. If I open that, it, it kind of makes it look like it's opening up the iPhone camera, but in fact, it's not. So um, now if I uh, slide to unlock here, you can see that you can do a password, which is a cool feature to have. Um, and it blocks the home button so that it's not glitchy and you can, on some lock screens, if you hit the home button, it, it uh, unlocks the phone without having to go through the password, but it, it blocks it, so that's good. Now, you do need to purchase this app to get custom wallpapers. Um, and I will tell you, I don't use this app simply because when it looks a little bit fake, you can tell. And, um, and, I, and it doesn't really interact with my notifications the way I want it to. And look, the lock screen's not a make or break for me. So that's one thing that I don't really feel like I need to have. And um, yeah, look, I don't use it, but you can get that. It's called High Lock Screen. Okay, the next app I'm going to show you is called Smart Toucher. Now, if I just go up from here, you can see what this emulates, which is the iOS control center um, and basically it looks really similar so you've got your quick toggles up here to turn off you know Wi-Fi turn on airport mode everything you can think of so you've got multiple rows there you can also adjust your brightness using this little slider that seems pretty accurate and you can um, you know you've got your music controls there as well and you've got your shortcuts down here for any apps that you want to add so you can add a whole nother page of apps and um, yeah. So if I jump into the settings of this app, you can see um, that basically most things are customizable. So you can turn on a couple of things so you can have the date show up. Um, you can turn on some device information. So now if I pull up, you can see down here, oops, you can see down here there's some device information and you've got the date that's popped up as well. Now, I don't use this app too much because it seems to be a little bit glitchy. Um, Basically, if it seems like if you don't open it for quite some time, it it won't open at all, and you need to go into uh, you need to go into the app itself and reactivate it to open it. And what let's see if it does it here. If I open up now, you can see what that did there. It's brought me back. It got out of that folder and brought me back. It can't. It's like it can't open up. It can't open on top of folders. And um, and if you saw there. It's actually just slid back. It's pretty dark in the background, so you might not have been able to see, but it slid back to the, my first page of apps. And, um, and basically, you know, what you want to use a control center for is for quick access to different controls. You know, it's not when I've got the time to jump into settings and into my music cap and stuff. It's, it's when I don't have the time. And if I'm having a jump in, reactivate it, and then, and then it's working, you know, it's, it's a little bit pointless for me. So I... I do really like the look of it. It emulates iOS Control Center really well, but um, but for the reason that it's just a little bit unpredictable, I don't use it for that reason. And I'm going to show you an alternative. The other thing that I want to show you, so I'm going to turn off Smart Toucher. The other one that I'm going to show you is called Control Center. Or it's actually called Control Panel Smart Toggle on, on the um, Play Store. So I'll start the service. Um, we'll see if we can set it up here. Okay, now, what's the difference, you ask? Well, really, there isn't any difference, to be honest. It looks pretty much exactly the same. There might be one little different thing here with this automatic brightness, the date, and um, the date's there, and, and you know, you've got your quick toggles here, and your shortcuts down here, and your music player app there. The only difference, actually, between the two of these apps is that this one isn't customizable. So whereas in the previous one, I could get rid of that device information, I could get rid of the date on the top there. This one, even though it claims to on the uh, screenshots on the Google Play Store, you can't do that. Now I thought that upgrading to the pro version might enable me to do that and so I paid for it and you can see it still says upgrade to pro version. I paid three bucks 18 for it and it did absolutely nothing. I don't know whether or not um, you know, there was some little error in the purchase or something, but it definitely came out of my account and it's still showing as a purchase on Google Play Store. 
but nothing changed. The app stayed the same. And yeah, unfortunately, that's a bit disappointing to me. So this one does seem to be a little more reliable, but it's uncustomizable. So, um, so as you can see there, that leaves the folder open in the background. If I open up here, that stays on the same page of app. So for that reason, this one's a little bit more reliable, as I said, but um, yeah, for the fact that um, that you can't customize it and then it's still, it's got that, you know, I don't really like need this date coming down when I've got the time up here and whatnot. Um, yeah, I, I don't use it to be honest. It is still a little bit um, unreliable like the other app. You know, it seems that after, I don't know, 10 or so minutes or after it locks the screen or something, I don't know what triggers it, but it, it's like you need to re get you need to go back into the app for it to work again. But anyway, so those two are called Smart Toucher and Control Panel Smart Toggle. They're both free on the Google Play Store, but like I said, the second option keeps telling you that you need to upgrade to the Pro version, and it's three bucks eighteen to do that, but it does nothing, so I wouldn't do it. Now I'm going to show you an alternative to these two Control Panel or Control Center emulators and it's called lazy swipe it's also free on the google play store and what this does is if i slide up from here you can see it brings up this quick um, panel of setting type things but also if i slide across you can um, jump to a, a list of your favorites um, so i've i've made this list i've put some apps that i regularly use in there and um, and also it's got a list of recent apps as well so you can see smart toucher and iNode and all that they're in there um, so this one's really cool because it's really reliable you can do it from both sides and like i said reliability and functionality is the priority for me i don't want a, an app that just looks good i want it to work well as well so this one does work well it's called lazy swipe and you can customize the look as well so i've got it on this dark theme but you can have technology white a bunch of different ones so i really recommend this if you're looking for the functionality of control center from ios this one's probably the best at doing it in terms of being reliable. So that's called Lazy Swipe. All right, guys, so that's part one of how to make your Android phone look and feel like an iOS device or an iPhone. So stand by for part two coming out very shortly. I'll see you then.